joining us, Labor MP Peter Khalil, also chair of the Committee on Intelligence and Security. Good to see you, Pete. It's been a while. Are you avoiding me? No, not at all. Good to see you. Well, I can't see you. I can just see a camera. Yeah, that's OK. All. We can hear each other. <laughs> hey, so TikTok, uh, we've spoken about this in the past. Why is it taking yeah. so long for the government to ban it on government devices? <laughs> well, well, I'll tell you, Peter, the Albanese government is actually taking a considered, uh, deliberate approach to regulating how digital platforms uh, access uh, and store consumer information, how they use that information. There was a uh, review commissioned on social media by the Minister for Home Affairs, Claire O'Neill, uh, a couple of months into government, uh, as soon as we got elected, really. Uh, that has been received by the government. Now, she is, and the government and, and the minister are um, reviewing that or looking at considering those recommendations. I heard Karen Andrews on your program earlier today decrying uh, that the government wasn't moving fast enough. I, I was, it was just incredulous. This is the person who was the Minister for Home Affairs in the Morrison government. Does she not realise that TikTok is not a new app? It has been around since 2016. The issues and concerns have been around since the very beginning when it was launched. And her government did nothing did absolutely nothing, and now they're all over the media saying, oh, you're not going fast enough. Yeah. They didn't even do anything about it. Uh, we have moved as quickly as possible to assess the issues. I can tell you that the review is very broad. It looks at all the national security implications, the issues around social cohesion, the way that data is uh, accessed, the way it's uh, utilised uh, by social media apps, um, and, and this includes all digital platforms, really, and their impacts on Australia's national interest. And I just think it's just outrageous that the opposition, who seemingly have a goldfish uh, type memory, have forgotten that for seven years they did nothing on TikTok sure. or digital platforms in this case. No, there have been, you're quite right, there have been concerns uh, about TikTok for a while now, but it's only recently, towards the end of last year, as a matter of fact, where those concerns had confirmation. Well, there was confirmation about those concerns. That's why the US and the UK have now moved to ban it since then. So, well, I can the tell ball's you, in your I court tell you, there. Pete, yeah. No, look, that's a really uh, not a very good defence of the previous government's inaction uh, in this space. Um, we are cleaning up years of inaction of the previous government and uh, and the opposition now who are. Who well, are no, sort of I don't think it, it, I don't think it is pace. a bad defence because I mean you don't want to go too early because there's not confirmation about um, security issues. But once that confirmation comes through from the US, which was at the end of last year, and do you know then when you move on it? So-called confirmation. Do you know when this so-called confirmation came through, Pete? There have been issues and concerns Towards around the end digital of last platforms year. Came from the for US. a number of years. And you were in government. Yeah, there have been there have been issues and concerns around digital platforms and social media apps and the way they are used for years, including this particular app, not just uh, you know not just exclusively this app. This has been an issue for years. The, the previous government did nothing. Any of the reports or the the issues that were raised and the concerns that were raised, they there basically was inaction by the previous right. government. And now okay. they're saying, oh, you're not moving fast enough. Okay. So, yeah. so the important point, though, is to set aside the politics. The government is actually looking very seriously at uh, social media uh, and digital platforms and their impact on society, our society and our national interest. Right. So why not just ban it, though? It's not that hard. Just ban it from government devices. Sorry? Why, but why not just move on well, it now? Look, I, I'm not going to preempt the, the minister and the government's decisions and, and, and how they and their consideration of the recommendations that have come right. through the review. That, that'll be announced by uh, Minister O'Neill and the government uh, in due course. Are you worried about offending uh, or hurting China's feelings? No, I think this is... I heard this was sort of discussed earlier this morning as well. Um, this is about uh, apps... Uh, some of them are state-owned and they're in a particular category. Some of a, a commercial uh, have a commercial purpose or are, 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 are driven by commercial uh, objectives, if you like. Both, uh, frankly, have impacts on the, the national interest in different ways and we're assessing how to uh, deal with each of them and to make sure that right. we protect um, the public interest and, and security. But also, uh, you know, obviously the other side of this is to maintain the individual's right to use, uh, you know, digital uh, platforms yeah. and so on. But it's not that's an individual using, and have a Using, sure, but, but using on personal devices, that's not the issue here. It's using it on government devices. Yeah, and, I, 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 you know, it's, you don't have to be a rocket science to uh, guess that the government is looking very closely at that particular issue. Yeah. yeah. Well, when's it going to make the ban? I don't know. I can't preempt the <laughs> announcement by the minister or the, or the government, but uh, I can tell you that it's uh, been looked at right now. 
Okay, final one here on China. Uh, Daniel Andrews, mm. uh, he's there in China at the moment. Uh, given his uh, previous Belt and Road agreements, uh, there are questions around transparency there because there are no cameras with him. Do you share those concerns about transparency? Well, uh, Pete, I've, I've seen the reporting around the, the journalists uh, not, not attending. Look, this is a matter for... I mean, you could, you'll could you have to check with the, the uh, Victorian government, the Premier's office. I know they raised there was some practical issues with that. Um, I will say this about the Premier's visit, though. Um, it is important to uh, advance uh, the interests and, and uh, you know, pursue economic interests on behalf of the people that he represents in the state of Victoria. He represents 6 million Australians, 6 million Victorians. He's there to try and ensure that uh, Victoria uh, has economic opportunities particularly in international education and with students coming back, and that's an important part of the Victorian economy, and he's doing that on behalf of the people that he represents, and that, that is a good thing. And it's also a good thing, frankly, in stabilising the relationship with China and engaging with China. This is something the federal government has also uh, been pursuing uh, with the first meeting by the foreign minister, the first visit by Penny Wong to China last year. Uh, and I've always said this, Peter... You do that and you can do diplomacy from a position of strength and relative strength. That's why our defence capability, uh, our, our ability to contribute to collective deterrence, uh, to dissuade anyone, frankly, right. from the idea that the use of force is going to get their ends, it channels everyone into trade and diplomacy, and that's a good thing. All right, Peter Khalil, we'll leave it there. Talk to you soon.